Welcome to the making of honeycomb soap. This is cold process, beeswax, and honey. I am Tina Monk. I am the author of the Soap Making Handbook Volume 1 and the creator of the eCourse Masterclass Advanced Soap Formulations. They are available at naturalsudsandmore.com. If you are brand new to soap making, please watch my lye safety video and beginner cold process video. You can also join my Facebook group, Soap Making and Business Coaching. We have lots of information in the files for you. Now when I do cold process soap, I heat all of my hard oils in the crock pot and then once they reach the desired temperature, I take the pot and sit it on the counter. And then I add my liquid oils and then I add my cooled off lye water. So this is done about 110 degrees. Any colder and the palm shortening I use will start to be solidify and I don't want to end up with false trace. So I have to really watch the temperature on this and sometimes it can, it can take a little bit to try to get this to where I need it to be. But I do melt my beeswax in with my hard oils and I don't like to um, add it at any other time. It works the best once it's melted in with the other oils. Uh, like I don't add it at trace or anything like that because if the oils are really cool, um, if you add hot beeswax to it, you can end up with beeswax chunks in there. So, But yes, beeswax is an accelerator and I use it at about 3% of my recipe. I don't recommend going any higher than that. Beeswax can also help um, eliminate soda ash too. This is pretty much the only soap that I use beeswax in, but you know, it's totally up to you. <laughs> I like to have more time to work with my, um, my cold process soap, so I don't normally use too many things that are going to accelerate, but uh, this is one of my best selling soaps. So I do uh, make it quite a lot, and I have been making this soap uh, for about four years, but uh, and I do add um, ground oatmeal to this too. It's a very simple recipe, and the recipe is in my book, The Soap Making Handbook, Volume 1. It's there if you have it, and if you uh, don't have the book and you want it, it's available at naturalsudsandmore.com, and also available on my Etsy page too, and those are um, linked in uh, on my website as well. But since this is a little bit colder, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to get a little bit thicker, but still the beeswax does speed this up. So there's not a whole lot that I can do with this soap. So um, before I even start, I always have my molds lined and I use uh, bubble wrap to line them so I get the honeycomb effect. And there I just added in uh, diluted honey and I never add the honey just straight in because it's so viscous that it can be hard to get mixed in. So I always dilute my honey with some of the water uh, that's discounted from the lye water and then I added my essential oils and I also uh, use some discounted water from the lye water to uh, mix in the oatmeal. Since the oatmeal um, absorbs the water and to try to help the soap not get as thick so fast, it uh, really helps to uh, pre-mix the oatmeal with the water first. So that way it's already absorbed all the water it's going to absorb and then it won't, uh, it still can thicken a little bit, but it just gives you a little bit more time to work with it if you're going to be using the oatmeal. And um, what I did for this, uh, my stick blender came with a a tall glass, I guess, if you would measuring container, I guess. But I, I put the the regular oatmeal, and I don't use um, the the quick oats. You want to use old fashioned oats when you're doing this. And I just put uh, the oats in the cup and then use my stick blender to uh, find, you know, grind that down really fine to add it into the soap. I don't use colloidal oatmeal or anything like that. I just use the regular old-fashioned oats and grind them down really fine and then that goes in the soap. And the orange essential oil gives this soap a really nice hue. 
Um, so I don't add any other colors or anything else to this. And I also do give it a little bit of um, a stick blend here just to make sure that everything gets mixed in and I don't get any clumps of oatmeal throughout the soap at all. So, But this is a you know very basic soap. It, um, it doesn't take too long to make, but it's just the, the temperature of getting the oils uh, to where you need it to be and um, can take a little bit of doing in the you know for this one but other than that it's very simple it's a very you know straightforward and there's the the molds that are lined with bubble wrap so I do the bubble wrap that's all the way around and then I have a piece that is cut just to fit on top so that way I have you know the bubble wrap honeycomb effect all the way around but you still want to make sure that um, because this is thick that you want to make sure that you pound down your molds to help remove any air bubbles and also to make sure that all the little pockets around the, the bubble wrap get filled in too Like I said, if you have, um, you know, as always, if you have any questions, let me know, and um, I'll be happy to answer them. You can leave them on the video or um, ask in the Facebook group, Soap Making and Business Coaching. And like, like I said, um, I briefly mentioned in the beginning that if you are new to soap making, we have information in the files for you in the group, so please check that out. And also, if you um, are into the business side of it, the the group has uh, a lot of information in the files for you. I've written a lot of workbooks. It's, they're free uh, just to help you with your business and uh, different aspects and things are like a lot of a lot of stuff is in there for you to help you out. So please check those out if you haven't yet. You know, anytime that you use honey in a soap, it is going to create a lot of heat. So I wanted to show you just a little bit of how fast uh, these soaps start to gel with the honey in it. And do uh, note that if it does start to overheat too much, you know, you can put it in the fridge. And I also, um, I did that here uh, just because I wanted to make sure it didn't overheat. But you don't have to if you, you know, keep an eye on it. But yeah, you just want to make sure that it's not going to like come up out of the mold and, you know, since this is cold process. But, you know, I've done this hot process and it's not a favorite of mine. I um, don't like to, I don't like the darker color that it ends up being. And, you know, and plus my customers are used to this looking like this. So this is uh, how I keep doing it. But. Now, if you do use honey in a hot process soap, you want to add it after the cook, still diluted so you can get it worked into your soap easier. But you want to wait until it's under 170 degrees to help the honey not scorch. Because if you add it too hot, which I have done, and um, it, it gets really dark. And I don't particularly like it that dark. so. Yeah, just want to make sure that you keep it under 170 degrees to keep that honey from scorching. But also, I just, I like how the, the coloring of this is as cold process, so. But, you know, you can always, no matter how I do things, um, I'm just showing you how I do it, so, you know, feel free to do it however works best for you, okay? And yes, you want to put this in the fridge for a little bit, and then uh, with cold process soaps, you're going to want to cut in about 24 hours. And especially with this one, because there is a lot of hard oils in there, and the beeswax too. But um, yeah, I, I left the camera on so you could see the change start to happen, and you can watch the gel stage start happening in the soap like really fast.
Yeah, it's it's very interesting in how fast this goes into gel phase. But yeah, anytime you're working with honey, you just know that you are going to get a lot of heat and it's going to get hot fast. So you really have to plan according, you know, to your design and how you want to do that in cold process. And any type of sugar that you add into your soap is going to help create a really great lather and lots of bubbles too. So just know that, um, you know, that's what it's in there for. <laughs> You know, because we don't know what properties are going to survive the saponification process and all that, but uh, any sugar is going to help give you that uh, really amazing lather. I'll get like a full gel on this in you know about five minutes, five to ten minutes usually, depending on the temperature. And I'll show you the cut picture here in a few seconds. This is the cut honeycomb. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at Natural Suds and More. You can also like my Facebook pages, Tina Monk and Natural Suds and More.